it is almost the most wonderful time of the year. I say almost because as of filming this, I still do not have my Christmas decorations up and I don't feel like I can really get into the Christmas spirit until my decorations are up. But while I'm putting my decorations up, I like to have a Christmassy audiobook in my ears. And then once the decorations are up, I want to read about Christmas, okay? I am a stickler for waiting until the 1st of December to start on Christmas. But while I'm doing Christmas, I want to do... Christmas. And not everything I read in December is going to be Christmassy, but if I'm going to read Christmassy stuff, it sure is hell going to be in December. So I wanted to tell you about the five Christmas books that are on my TBR. I have three audiobooks and two physical books. Haven't read any of these books in their entirety, but if you want to read them, we can read them together. Or if you have read them, let me know what you thought in the comments. See if you can either scare me off them or bump them higher up my list. <laughs> so let's start with the audio recommendations because I need one of these at least to start putting my decorations up. And the first one that I found is Make the Season Bright by Ashley Herring Blake. I've actually never read an Ashley Herring Blake book, but this is, I think, her third or fourth that I've heard of. And I think she's famous for sapphic romances. It kind of seems to have the same premise as that new Lindsay Lohan rom-com on Netflix, which, to be honest, was pretty mediocre. But basically, it's about Charlotte who goes home with her friend Sloan for Christmas and Sloane's sister also brings a friend home, which happens to be Charlotte's ex, Brighton. And of course, they're sort of forced to do all these Christmassy things together and come what may or who may. Uh, it sounds a little bit like Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran, which is another Christmas book that came out a couple of years ago. And I loved that book. So if it's going to live up to that, I am all for it. I also love a sapphic romance. So I'm very excited for this one. I've heard really good things about it, like more skewed towards positive things than any of her other books that I've heard of. So that's very promising to kick off the Christmas season, right? Though I will say, in terms of premise, the second audiobook on my Christmas TBR is definitely most up my alley. And that is The Holiday Honeymoon Switch by Julia McKay. It's billed as The Holiday meets The Unhoneymooners, which honestly, it sounds like that's exactly what happened. The author watched The Holiday and read The Unhoneymooners and was like, make a baby. <laughs> the two main characters are named Holly and Ivy because it's a Christmas book. So of course their names have to be Holly and Ivy, but they're best friends. Holly gets left at the altar. So she convinces Ivy, her best friend, to skip her usual annual solo art retreat that she does and instead go on what would have been Holly's honeymoon to Hawaii, which is non-refundable. So Ivy goes in Holly's stead to Hawaii. What a burden. And while Ivy is there, the man that left her best friend at the altar shows up to his would-be honeymoon with another woman. Meanwhile, Holly's in Colorado having a little second chance romance with her high school academic rival, who also happens to be her Airbnb host. Does it sound a little bit like trope soup? Yes, it does. But if it's executed well, I don't see a problem with that. I think it sounds really fun. And I think if I'm ever going to be okay with trope soup, Christmas is the time. The last Christmas audiobook on my TBR is called This Is Not A Holiday Romance by Camilla Isley. And this is about Nina, whose brother's best friend Tristan, uh, she's always had a sort of antagonistic sibling-like relationship with. But Tristan crashes her family Christmas and they get snowed in. And Nina and Tristan decide that they're going to give in and like have a fling, but it's definitely only for right now because of course it is. I love a brother's best friend romance when it's done well. I can't tell from looking at this how old Nina is. And one of the problems I have sometimes is that brother's best friend romances can make the sister come off really childish. And I hate that. Or sometimes, and or I should say, the brother comes off as very overprotective in an almost misogynistic way. But how old she is, I think will make a really big difference to how this plays out in terms of the tone. And when executed well, brother's best friend romances romances are so we'll see. So now let's go on to my two paperback Christmas TBRs. And the first one I actually have the ARC copy of because my actual copy is downstairs. Uh, sorry, Jack, is Look Up Handsome by Jack Strange. I love Jack. Jack and I are on the same publishing list and Jack is wonderful. This came out in September and I started to read it when it first came out, but it is so Christmassy that I was like, oh, I really just want to wait and read this in December. So I put it aside and I'm so excited to 
pick it back up. This is set in Hay on Wye, which is like a book town in Wales. And this is about Quinn, who owns Hay on Wye's only queer bookshop, and romantic novelist Noah, who is in town begrudgingly. And again, they get snowed in. I love a snowed in trope in a Christmas rom-com. And because Hay on Wye is so small, it ends up being this sort of small town forced proximity rom-com. It's an MM queer romance. And I have been so excited to pick this back up since I put it down. Like the second that tree is trimmed, me, this book, cup of hot chocolate, cozy blanket, in front of the fire. I've got a date with myself. I'm so excited. And then finally, the last book on my Christmas TVR is The Christmas Tree Farm by Lori Gilmore, another person that is on the same publishing list as me. But Lori Gilmore has been churning out these Dream Harbor books, and this is the third book in the series. The first one was Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Second one was Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. The small town of Dream Harbor and the sort of the recurring cast of characters are absolutely the best part about this series. I am really interested to see how this one plays out because it's about Kira, who just moved to town and bought the town's Christmas tree farm, but she's a bit of a Grinch. And then you've got Bennett, who's in Dream Harbor on vacation. So it'll be really interesting to see what a Dream Harbor book is like, where neither of the people in the central relationship is a townie. But basically, Bennett ends up helping Kira fix up the place and Christmassy romance ensues. Like I said, it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out, but I trust Lori to nail it. Again, gonna cozy up with a cup of hot chocolate and read this. It's gonna be fantastic. There's always so many Christmas books out every year that it's really hard to know which ones to dive into. So let me know in the comments if you've read any or have any on your radar that sound like something I'd like based on the ones that I've said today. Because realistically, I will have time for more than five and I want to lean into Christmas while I can. So let me know in the comments what else I should be reading. I have a lot of Christmassy content coming your way as well, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.